Hello, my name's Alex P. Twig, and we're going to do a quick tutorial here in 3D Studio Max on setting up um, an image based light. That's uh, a light that's going to use a HDRI light probe as its light source. Um, and we're going to have a look at how we're going to manipulate that within 3D Studio Max. Now, uh, as you can see, I've got a scene set up which has got a couple of objects in. So I've got um, a Taurus knot, a teapot, the good old classic, and uh, a plane. I'm just going to increase the segments on uh, both of these objects to. Uh, Make it a little bit smoother. Let's drag that up. There we go. That'll do. Okay, so I've got these two objects in here, um, and I already have this set up, but let's reset it up again. Okay, so just select that light, and right. Clear. The light that I've got set up here is just a skylight. You drop those in from the, uh, the Create palette and you select Lighting, Standard Lighting and drop in a skylight. Um, let's do a quick render so we can see what we're starting with. Okay, let me just go into Rendering Environment and clear that. Okay, so this is your basic render, this is where we're starting from. Okay, so you can see we do have shadows in there, um, everything's very white, um, and uh, yep, yeah, everything's as you expect it with just a single light source in. Now let's bring in the uh, the HDR light probe. Now the place I like to start when I'm bringing in a light probe is in, as you saw, the environment tab. I come in and bring in a bitmap. Um, I've already got mine selected, so I've navigated to it, and I've got my bitmap selected there. Uh, click open and it brings up this uh, little interactive panel here. This sets how bright your light is because a HDRI light source or light probe has a high dynamic range so it can be really really bright or really really dark and still retain all the details um, of, the, of the image. Um, how this is stored and gathered is dictated by how it's created and the creation of light probes will be dealt with in a separate tutorial. Um, for the basics of it um, set it to real pixels, 32 bits per channel, um, and um, what you want to do is uh, set this red line to where you want the brightness to be. Further right is darker, further left is brighter. So if I were to start here, okay, I'll, uh, then I'm going to drag that over. I'll create this in a new material. So I'll drag this over into this material slot, copy it as an instance. Okay, so you can see the level of brightness there. Um, if I wanted to reload that, click bitmap, and then open, and drop it further to the left so it's brighter. You can see it's really popped up this little bit of lightness here. Okay, one thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to change it from a screen mapping to a spherical environment map. Um, that way it's going to wrap around your scene correctly. Um, because it's an instance, it's updated in all the different places it's located. Now, with your light selected and in your modify panel, you want to add a map and you're going to just drag and drop again as an instance that map in. Okay, so let's uh, bring this render back, do a copy of it so we've, uh, we can compare and contrast. And let's do another render. Straight away, you can see the difference in the two, how much bluer this light probe is um, and uh, you can see that on top here this back left edge or back right edge of the teapot is very very bright and we've got the darkness down here and the shading underneath. When you combine this with different types of lights such as uh, directional lights you can get a really powerful um, effect and uh, things just immediately look much more naturally lit because there's more variation. Um, it's especially useful I found when I'm rendering um, images of characters where they've got subsurface scattering on. Okay, so that's uh, just the quick basic setup of how you use the light. And just for demonstrative purposes, let's see what happens if we change the light probe from an outside source to an inside. So, back in the... Uh, back in here, in the uh, material editor, let's go back in to the bitmap. I'm just going to navigate to where I've got a, another light probe. I believe I've got one here. No. There we go. Let's use this one. So this is, you can see that it's much oranger. 
Um, it's an inside. It's it's lit with uh, tungsten lighting. Okay, um, so that's uh, that's been added. Make sure it's still set to spherical environment. Sometimes they have a habit of changing back to screen when you reload them, which can be a bit vexing, but doesn't matter. Okay, so I've just cloned off a copy of that, and let's re-render. So very, very different there. Um, look at the difference in the, the colors and the brightness. Um, that's a, that bright hot spot on the back of the teapot has gone. Um, it's just a much more diffuse source of lighting now. Uh, let's go into that, uh, that bitmap. Use the same one, but I'm going to drag that further left. I'm just going to brighten it up now. So you can see that it's really blown those colors out. I might have gone a bit too far, but uh, let's see. Ah, so here's what I was describing. It's changed it from uh, to a back to a screen um, mapping again. So get rid of that back on uh, spherical environment and re-render. So really bright there, much too bright really. But you can see the difference just changing that exposure setting um, on the material has. So let's uh, just ramp that back a bit. Let's bring it that side. There we go. Okay, that looks a little more, little more usable. Okay, so that's the effect it has on lighting. Um, but don't forget, there's also uh, there's an environment map in there as well, which is going to reflect the reflect affect the reflection. So let's uh, have a look how we can uh, use that. Okay, just get rid of that and that. Bringing up the material editor, I've already got some materials set up. So I've got a matte plastic. I've got a chrome and I have got a frosted glass material already set up. That they're all preset arc and design materials. Okay, This is probably going to stutter a bit as it goes through and it might send my video out of sync slightly but this is the last render I'm going to do so it shouldn't cause too much of a problem. Hitting render. As this comes in what you're going to be able to see is all the reflections generated by the lighting, um, the, the light probe and the effect that it, it has on the scene. You know you can see I'll just wait a bit further. You can see the uh, the effects of the, the lights and the reflection of them in the, the surface of this material. Um, lots and lots of detail going on in this uh, chrome teapot. So this is the power of setting up this scene. You, can, uh, you get a lot more detail without having to model lots of extra geometry or set up any sort of complex lights with um, bound surfaces on. It's a, a really, really quick method to work with. Um, I hope this tutorial has been useful for you. As I said, there's going to be um, another tutorial which covers on how to create your own light probes. Um, my name's been Alex P. Twig, and uh, thank you very much for your time uh, watching this video.